Hello and welcome from Dave M0 OGY. Right, uh, today's review is of the Thunderpole T3000. Whilst not a new radio, the Thunderpole T3000 was launched around about four years ago and uh, ha had an upgrade around one year ago. So it's not a new radio by any means, but um, it seems to have a decent following and uh, the reviews and things on YouTube uh, seem to rate it. So I thought I'd get one and we'll try it um, in uh, mobile and base station in the coming weeks. So Thunderpole is a, a brand, a company who's been trading from Northampton in England for many years. Since uh, the early 80s in fact, when they manufactured... Uh, CB antennas uh, called Thunderpole. There was quite a popular base station antenna as there was a legal antenna with a very large ground planes and one of the first to offer that. So uh, getting back to the radio it's a multi-norm CB so it works in all countries. Um, it comes preset for the UK as uh, the general market seems to be England but uh, it does have all the UK norms for all over the world uh, you know the world Europe should I say so what uh, comes with the radio firstly the packaging is very nice I also like to see decent packaging instead of just a, a bland brown cardboard box as some of the you know lesser uh, cheaper brands come with so that uh, you know, doesn't uh, let you down. I, I don't do um, unboxings, I don't see the point in it. Uh, I've got it set up so I'll just go through it really. So you've got the box, you've got the radio, the transceiver unit which is uh, quite compact. Um, the back of the unit uh, looks like die cast aluminium to me, painted black. Um, forward f facing front speaker on your right hand side which is uh, a decent thing comes with a really good microphone the microphone um, I'll show you first very solidly made it, it actually to be fair but you know a lot of the uh, rival brands and you know, the microphones are as good as this so it's very nice quite well weighted um, it's like a plastic uh, mount to mount it on You've got the uh, PTT there, and on the top you've got the up and down channel keys, and you've got an auto squelch in the middle, and you can hear. So you can turn the squelch, the auto squelch, on and off with a microphone. So that's your mic, the head unit, the uh, power lead again. Looks uh, decent enough power lead. The power lead looks very much like an Amstrad CB901 type plug on the end. I'm probably totally wrong but it's just uh, that sort of style. Um, and one good point, I've not seen it on many CB radios. In fact if any it does have twin fuses. So you have, um, I don't know if you can see it behind there, but behind that bracket there is a large fuse holder where both um, leads pass through the red and black so there's a, a, a fuse in each line and it does come with a spare fuse so that re very reminiscent of you know a lot of amateur radios uh, so as I noted right so brackets um, looking there you've got a DIN mounting cage to fit it uh, you know in your dashboard if you've got a single DIN there's um, some keys looking out in that bag there some like um, sliding keys to fit it in very much like your old uh, car radio keys to fit you've got a plastic mounting bracket uh, it looks like it's 3d printed possibly if not it's molded but what, whatever it's very strong a lot of people have the illusion that plastic is very weak and not up to much but uh, I think you'd be very unlucky for that to break. Also, looking on that side, you've got a, a user manual that seems very thin. 
it tells you what you need to know but it's all, all in English which uh, is certainly a good thing for our country anyway and there's also another packet which has a spare fuse there's some thumb screws in there and there's a, a mic hanger a black plastic one that sticks on again quite like that idea it's better than drilling two holes in your dash so it does come with a plastic mic hanger so looking on the front panel of the radio the microphone as I've already shown you um, it is a six pin um, six pin on your left you have volume let's just get panned in there a bit better silly little game out of focus so yeah you've got volume on off here and that one comes on on the UK volume on off Vox and lock for your functions on here uh, colour that's your and dual watch well that's your display uh, go through them you've got orange green sort of a purple colour I guess they call that cyan yellow a white and screen off so if you're mobile oh there's a blue there and back to uh, the orange colour yeah so the screen's very good it's very quite basic but um, it, that ain't a bad thing the uh, channel readout is extremely large what else do you need to be fair there isn't what I can see a, a frequency readout but really is there any need for that on a CB radio probably not yeah so going back anyway let's have another look so yeah so you've got your Vox your colour and the, uh, what's that one dim your dim sorry facility as well so I'd dim it all you've got channel 9 and 19 so you've got the two channels as again seems pretty common that one doesn't it uh, mode and band so that's how you get in your mode so AM and FM when you're on the EU band for instance um, it'll only work in F on FM mode on the UK 40 then moving across you've got you've got your auto squelch at the bottom and again it's like an on off switch I do like to see this so you've got an on off like an on off switch for your squelch and for your auto squelch and then you've got a normal squelch control up and down channel keys to move it up and down um, can't see any sort of you know normal channel change so yeah you just use that it's easier obviously to use the uh, up and down channel change on the microphone um, we've got some lights in there I think yeah on the uh, under here there's a, a green light for receive I guess it'll probably change to red when you transmit but we'll try that when it's plugged in an antenna certainly won't be doing that beforehand got a, a large forward space it's forward facing speaker trying to suss out what they are there's two little screws there two little holes there we'll look into that um, so that's your front panel um, plastic fascia yeah pretty when I took it out of the uh, box it felt really solidly made quite well weighted you know so that's uh, that so uh, we'll have a look at the back of the radio now and what it looks like right so this is your rear panel your power lead in again as I say it looked very much like the old sort of Amstrad style with a square on one side and a circle on the other You've got a DC 12 and 24 volts. I, I guess that's to do. Yeah, it's just showing you that, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bit off putting, isn't it? <laughs> Looks like it's got a cover on it, but no, it's just pointing that out. I think you've got a 3.5 millimeter jack plug for an external speaker. Again, pretty common with all radios. Fairly large heat sink. 
the top you've got to, you, you know, your specs and your serial number and then below you've got your normal antenna socket got two lugs here for mounting your bracket if you use the plastic bracket the back uh, panel is certainly looks it to me like cast aluminium yeah it's got to be on it cast aluminium painted like a satin black colour um, moving around I'll spin it around if I can without stopping the video can I get it out yeah, that's showing it. So that's what it looks like side on, so it's very compact. You know, very compact. Yeah, ideal to fit in your truck. And the actual size of it is DIN size, you know, the actual width and depth of it is DIN size. And thus, this bracket, if you can see that, that comes with it as a, that bracket actually comes with it. So you can put it in your dash and all. The other thing, as I showed you earlier, is that a plastic plastic mount bracket so you can sort of mount it onto uh, that way yeah, so it sits sits in there sort of like that and, you know mounts into there so that's uh, you know not a, not a bad way of mounting it I guess most people mount it like that that'd be ideal if you want to fit it into your you know, a shack or anything, you could fit some rubber feet on the bottom, I guess, rather than that. But yeah, that's a look around the side of it. Right, finally, a few of the features I'll just briefly go through. I showed you Vox and Lock, etc. The colour we went through, didn't we? Channel 9, 19 mode so you've got you know you uh, eu mode fm eu mode am anti mary as we used to call it and back to uk fm so dead easy to use not rocket science really really yeah, spot on ideal if you just want something with you know am and fm and no sideband it's a, a good product I guess for you know your tractors, cars, trucks and if you want it you know a nice little compact radio under your bench in your office or there's a little base station. Right to conclude this uh, first part review of the Thunderpaul T3000 it's available from Thunderpaul, which is based in Northampton here in uh, the UK. The price is £119.99. Uh, they do offer free delivery UK mainland. So it is their, technically the high, their highest priced radio by about £5. The, one below, the model below that is the T2000, which has a similar face here but it's a mobile radio with you know your standard you know, metal casings a larger size uh, first impressions are very good well made um, fairly basic display or what you really need it will off, off put your mobile for, for, for instance uh, in upcoming videos I will be showing it on air on my Vortex Quasar Q82 antenna. Um, there has been quite a lot of short UK skip from sort of the middle of the top of the country down to the south coast in the last week or two. So I really hope that that's the case when I get it plugged in the antenna and can work quite a number of stations and get you all on video. Um, that's the plan but uh, you, you can't make <laughs> propagation and skip so on that note thanks for watching 
the video and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye. 73 from Dave M0 OGY26 Alpha Tango 025. Bye bye.